Okay. I reckon there's certain things that need answering once and for all. So I've composed an email to the Meat Hygiene Service uh, looking for some answers. Dear sir or madam, could you please tell me if any of these animal parts are allowed to be used in a sausage? Ears, eyes, eyelids, noses, brains, lips, nipples, maybe that should be udders, bum holes, tail, testicles, penis, bones and ball bag. Please let me know as soon as possible. Yours in anticipation, Alex Riley. No, that should do it. It all started a few weeks ago. Me, Garen and Becca were chatting, as you do, over dinner, and Becca asked this killer question. What's the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten? And I thought, that's a great question. But how do I find the answer? So, I set out to find the nastiest, most minging food legally on sale in Britain. Yeah, so basically, that is a 100% shit burger. Yeah, all the cheap rubbish. Before I knew it, I had another question to answer. Nice. You like it? How do they make this crap taste so nice? How do food manufacturers perform the modern miracle of turning crap ingredients into something that looks and even tastes like good food? That's what uh, human life came out of in the swamp, isn't it? To find out the tricks of the trade, I was going to have to get my hands dirty. I felt sure the food industry would help me, if I asked nicely. They didn't like what we were doing. Uh, they told us they, we can't use the footage and they've asked us to leave. What's the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten? Oh, my God! Why won't you tell me what's in your food? What do you think's the most disgusting thing that... Yourself. No comment, mate. All I had to do was find the one food product so full of mm, rubbish <sighs> and yet so good to eat That's very nice. that it could rightfully be awarded the crown of crap. I have become a connoisseur of crap. A man whose nose for rubbish has become very fine-tuned. I've become an expert in e-numbers, chemicals and nasty, unexpected extras. I've been scouring the supermarket shelves for them. Excuse me, where can I find the chicken? I've checked out lots of takeaways and restaurant chains' lists of ingredients. Hello there, um, uh, my name's Alex Riley. While waiting for some of them to get back to me, I've been to the cash and carries that supply parts of the catering trade. And now I've got a big pile of crappy cuisine to choose the worst from. But the trouble I'm having at the moment is that how do you rate one against the other? What's more disgusting, either a cheese alternative block or chicken breasts that are only 60% chicken. The rest of it's water and salt and chemicals and rubbish. So they don't have to put as much chicken in. What's more disgusting than anything else? What does disgusting mean at the end? What is disgusting? So, to work out which one is the worst, I'll try to put it to a public vote. What if I could sneak my crap food onto a stand at the Good Food Show at the NEC in Birmingham? 2,700 foodies an hour should be able to help me work out which is the most nasty. That is obscene. No, have you seen what my stand's called? Oh, no! How embarrassing. Oh, my goodness. To help identify the worst food I've got on offer, I've developed an unscientific scoring method. I'm going to ask people to mark everything out of 40. And there's no lack of expertise. So, Ben, you, you're from uh, the Cheeseworks. Yeah. What, what's, what's that? Uh, basically, we're a traditional cheese shop. Um, we stock uh, traditional made British cheeses. People come to us because we're known as a cheese specialist. The perfect person to rate one of my best cash and carry finds. Is it cheese or isn't it? I'm not quite sure why you'd need an alternative to cheese. I mean, I know that there are lactose intolerant people who can't eat cheese. But this has got skim milk in it. So why do you need an alternative cheese? Let's see if we can find out, shall we? Hello. Can I speak to uh, somebody in sales, please? 
And what are you interested in? Well, cheese is quite expensive. It is. Um, and uh, I believe you could help me out on that. Have you got like a camembert? Uh, no, we, we, we produce cheese from manufacturers primarily. Right. Um, sometimes they want, say, what we call an analogue added to bulk it. What's an analogue? An analogue is a non cheese item, but it looks like cheese. It's like margarine to butter. Does it taste like it? No, no taste. But they no. use it to bulk up the cheese content, if you know what I mean. So it looks like a lot. Sounds, sounds great. It's got, it's got skim milk. And then That's good, got... skim milk, not, not as fatty. Not as fatty, but then you've got three different types of vegetable oil. So would I have to actually mix any real cheese with it to make it taste... Oh, yeah. Oh, right. You can get a lot of flavour out of a lot of analogues. It leaves you with a kind of... A funny taste at the top of your, top of your mouth. It goes into pasties, pies, um, quiches, all that sort of thing. Pizzas? And pizzas. We sell to the big producers. Producers of They food. produce stuff for supermarkets. So they're all in the supermarkets? These? Yeah. Have you eaten it? I don't It's not nice. Not nice in a, in a sandwich or a... Oh, no. If you were having a cheese board, would you use... No. Even, even just a bit of it with some with a Stilton. No, because it's almost tasteless. I get you. So it's it's worse than those like individual cheese slices. It's. Oh, they are bad. There's only a certain point to which you can drive price on food. You're going to start ending up with certain problems thereafter, and it's no coincidence that the rise of degenerative diseases is increasing year on year. If you look at the diet that most people eat, so so people don't, don't know what they're eating. They and what don't, effect is going to have? They have no them. idea. No. Interested further, I can take your name and number. Um, leave it with me. If you'd like to try cheese alternative, you may find it bulking out an omelette or pizza at your local takeaway. Usually listed on packets by individual ingredients, as words cheese alternative likely to put people off. I need somewhere to record the official ratings. Have a look at this. We've done the scale. Got these little A5 sheets. Right, the type of food in the in the window here. The higher the score, the worse it is. And this is then taken to our white line of truth with the best, most nutritious, most honest food going down the left-hand side. The worst, most tricky, full of crap foods right up this end. Let me get a, a form. <coughs> So where's cheese alternative on the board? It scored extra points for trickery because, you know, you eat it thinking it's cheese and it's actually a cheese alternative. So that's got a score of 27. So that's just one person's opinion. Spam fritters. Hospital food. People are starting to throw in their own suggestions, but I think some people are missing the point here. Somebody has actually eaten human excrement here. Somebody, a nursery nurse, who accidentally puts them in her mouth and she rated that at only 20 points. It was disgusting, but it was what she expected. Now, also on 20 points is Skittles Crazy Sours. This person really doesn't like them, and they've been rated by one website as one of the least nutritious of all the snack foods on sale in Britain today. Basically, it's just calories. The rest of it is junk. Now, if you look on the packaging, they've got pictures of fruits. You look at the ingredients list and it's just basically, it's like a chemistry set. And look at this on the bottom. E124 amongst a variety of other E numbers. Now that is actually banned in America. Hang on a minute, they're, they're banned in America. Garen loves these things. If you find this in his luggage, you'll get taken down. Where's he going? Where's my phone? You've got skittles, yeah? Yeah, about five packets, man. Yeah, they've got E124 in them. Really? Help you. I'm just about to fly to the States. I was just about to check in, but um, I've got uh, a few packs of uh, UK Skittles in, uh, on me, and it turns out I've just been told that they carry the E number E124, which is apparently banned in the US. Am I liable to get in trouble for that? Well, if you have it, I mean, and, and you declare it, 
and we and we uh, see that it's not allowed, we'll just confiscate it. But you're not going to get in trouble with so, it. So, so hold on. Um, I mean, you'll take them away from me, basically, yeah, like we'll every take time. Take them away from me. Yeah, that's what um, we'll do. But you have to declare them. If you try to hide them, then you're in trouble. So, so but say if, if if I was to just eat them all now, um, because it's a banned substance, what would happen to me? Would I like have a crazy reaction to it or something like that? I mean, is it because they're crazy skittles or? I have no idea. You would have to check with the regulatory agency as to why. Okay. We have Skittles here in the U.S. Yes. It may be that the U.K. Skittles yes. have an ingredient in them that the Food and Drug Administration here in the U.S. has found to uh, not be acceptable. Oh, well. Anyone want a skill? If you like your food coloured with e 24 a red synthetic coal tar dye, you can enjoy it in Iron Brew, Green Core Bart Simpson Cakes, Revels and a host of other kiddies' favourites. Banned in Norway in the United States, not suitable for hyperactive children. Well, it's the end of day one. We're still here. We haven't been thrown out. We were told to tidy up a bit this morning, but as you can see, the whole place is looking very professional now. Lots of people have started to contribute to our survey. We've been creating a bit of a buzz in this area, but I'm slightly concerned because the chicken fillets that are only 60% chicken, the rest being salt, water, gum and other rubbish, I'm a little bit worried that they may have so little chicken in them that they will be illegal, so I'm going to have to get these checked out. <laughs> Yes, you thought you'd order just chicken, but these breasts are pumped up with a gloopy cocktail of chemicals, salt and water. I picked these beauties up at Booker, Britain's biggest cash and carry, selling to corner shops, canteens and caterers. Of course, most of what they sell is really good quality. But I'm not going to hold that against them, because they also sell some of my favourite crap. But I wonder how chicken with more than a third gloop can be legal, which it has to be to compete for the crown of crap. So I'm having it checked out. Yeah, I bought this uh, today, and it's only 60% chicken, and the rest of it's water. And I wondered if that was actually legal. Yeah. <laughs> What you've got in that product is, it starts off with chicken at 60%, you've then got quite a lot of water, you've then got salt and other salt derivatives which are used really to hold the water within the, the meat of the chicken so that it doesn't get lost during the freezing process. And I think just to kind of bulk it out really and to make the appearance perhaps not as, as bad as it could be. The only reason for that is to extend it, make it cheaper, increase profit for the people actually making it. Yeah. In terms of it being legal, I think it would be difficult to take that to court and say, well, actually, it's misleading to call that chicken. So, chicken breast enlargements are legal and still in the game, which is a relief. Thank you so much. You're an amazing audience, the best so far, actually. I think, everybody, Swedish tartar is what we need on our menus Let's everywhere. Who can live without it? Since shopping for some of my crap at Booker Cash and Carry, guess what I've discovered? I've opened the catalogue for Booker, and who should be in the front but celebrity chef Mr Gordon Ramsay. Plain speaking with Gordon Ramsay. Autumn is my fucking favourite time of the fucking year. So, oh, sorry, you were uh, filming. Uh, I've been working with the team at Booker to make the most out of the abundance of produce available at this time of year. Take a look at the selection of recipes I've included in this issue. All the ingredients are available from your local Booker branch. Bloody hell. Will you be doing chicken breasts? Because I will. Roll up, roll up. All the fun of the fair. Come on down. So I'm going to try and force a huge amount of water into a, a chicken breast and see what happens. Now this is chicken with added water. So this chicken plus this water equals that. Live breast enlargements. So let's pop that in there. A first for the good food show. See what effect that has. I'm going to get 46 grams of water into it to make it as big as the other one. Can I have a volunteer from the audience, please? No, obviously not. They must have a better system than a blow with a syringe <laughs> in the factory, doing each one individually. It can't be saving them any money, can it?
It turns out I'm right. They do have a better system. They have machines to inject their gloop. Boob Job Chicken is a definite front runner, so I just want to make sure that it's readily available. Excuse me, have you got any um, cheap frozen chicken breasts? Uh, the blue box would be the cheapest one. Okay. Is that all right stuff? Well, it's added water. 30% added water. What does that mean? 30% added water. <laughs> added out of water. It's not a one. If you think, well, I'd never eat that sort of thing, think again. But so you sell a lot of it, though. Really? Yeah, maybe the Chinese Indian restaurants. Are. Okay. Yeah. Sorry? It's got the one box at the moment. Are these? Yeah. No, about a thousand. Most of these places are wholesalers, but some sell direct to the public. Do people know that it's got added water when they buy it? I don't really think so, to be honest with you. You don't really meant to tell people that. But none of the other chicken breasts we found contained as much watery gloop as the magnificent SK bronze breasts, the equivalent of going from a 34C to a double D cup bought from Booker. Jordan would have been proud of this exceptional product, and I think Booker should be too. So I'm going to tell them. Okay, it should be nice and warm. Tell me if it's too hot. Can you open up a little bit. Oh, babe. Oh my. Oh my. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Oh, Andre. Oh, wait, don't, don't waste it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm already unstable. I've only got a quarter of the water in. Keep talking. This one doesn't feel quite as warm as the last one. All right. Can we have a bit more hot in this next batch? I don't think I'm going to be able to walk before. Can't stand up there. I literally can't stand up. Oh, shit. How much more is there? That one? I don't know how full one. I'm trying to see what happens. <laughs> no. Oh shit, that's it. Oh, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Oh no. Manager's here. Hiya, alright. We've, uh, we, we're doing an experiment to show uh, a possible idea for a new advertising campaign for Booker. Right. Maybe get Gordon Ramsay, a rubber suit, fill it with 40% water, and say, hello, I'm Gordon Ramsay. I love chicken at Booker because there's that much water in it. It's have just you like this. Have you got permission to film? I've got permission to wear the suit. Have you got permission to film? <laughs> have we got permission to film? Uh, no, no, no. No, we haven't got permission, permission to film. To film so we can start filming. Okay. Do you think, is it, is it a good idea? Is it a good idea for an advertising campaign? Fantastic idea. 60% chicken, 40% water, <laughs> get in. You just need to get some permission. Can we get Gordon on the line? Can we give Gordon a ring? You can film out there if you like. Right, well, OK. <laughs> We'll stand over there, that sounds good. Is there anything else we should be looking at at Booker that's, you know, got loads of water or... What's the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten? Yeah, get, give Gordon a ring. He'll love this, he'll love it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hi, I think meat tastes better with water in it. Look at me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just 60% man with 40% added water and salt and gum and all the crap. That's why I get my chicken from Booker, where it comes with loads of extra added value. Oh, that's right in me knackers. The BBC wishes to make clear that 60% chicken is in no way endorsed by Gordon Ramsay. Baby. <laughs> Bookers say the relatively high water content in the SK Bronze Chicken product helps retain succulents, and the product is clearly labelled. Hello, is that the meat hygiene service? Yes, that's right. But something could Hello, still knock the chicken off its perch as the most disgusting thing I can buy, sausages. I've had a reply to my email. Time to hear what body parts can legally go into them. Ears. No, that would not go into sausages. No to ears. Eyes. No. Eyelids? No. Noses? No. Brains? No, definitely not brains. Lips? Uh, no. 
nipples or udders or no. bum holes? No, they would not be used. They're part of the digestive tract and they would not be used in pies or sausages. Tail? Tail, uh, the only tail that would be commercially uh, used may well be meat taken from oxtail. Testicles? No, not normally in this country. Penis? Uh, no. Ball bag? No. No? No. No? That is gutting. Can you turn the cameras off? <sighs> but that night it came to me. Lips and ball bags were kids' stuff. Food manufacturers had far cleverer and legal ways to stuff crap into a sausage skin. Bangers bought at Booker were back on the menu. These are the beautiful beef bangers that we're so excited about. A really high quality sausage will have 80% meat in it and some other stuff to make it taste nice. The absolute minimum you can get away with is 32% meat. That's your economy sausage. But the label on these little beauties says just 5% proper meat. That's why they're not allowed to be called sausages, but bangers. I really want to know what's in the other 95%. So I've had a sausage scientist reverse engineer a recipe, as close as we can get, from the ingredients list on the back of the McKechnie Jess Bangers with Beef packet. And once I get hold of the ingredients, I'll make my own. And then the secrets of the banger shall be laid bare. I'm looking for some connective tissue. Beef connective tissue, that's the thing I'm most interested in getting today. Which we don't do. You don't do? No, because they don't well, put that in our sausage. OK, yeah. but if you're not going to use it, then can I use it? Um, if you've got some in no, the back. No, because I just don't say it, I just throw it away. Have, have you got any that you've thrown away recently that might still be in the bin? Yes, I have. Could I have that? Right, this is where we would normally put it. Um, which. There's a business opportunity here because you're throwing away things that these people could buy and use. That is another income stream for you. You could make, you could make a bit of money. Oh, I couldn't it? sleep at night. <laughs> Once it's in the bin, it's not fit for human consumption. But before it goes in, it's fair game. I was able to intercept some of this butcher's waste products on their way to the rubbish. Right, OK. I've Brilliant. been making sausage for, you know, 50-odd years, and uh, I've never in my life put anything like that in. Got your beef fat, uh, mechanically separated chicken meat, with your rusk pork rind. But if a school uh, wants to spend 5p on a sausage, then they're only going to get something like that. Something like that, which you'd never, ever use. Is that beef else. fat? That's beef fat. Oh, right, yeah. we'll have some of that. Yeah. What's the most disgusting thing you've ever eaten? Anything that's minced and further processed, uh, there's no actual visible side of what you are eating. So, who knows? And um, I dread to think. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Looks absolutely disgusting. Uh, all the waste and crap that they usually throw in the bin, ready to be made into our beautiful bangers. Up We're trying to get hold of Gordon Ramsay. We know that he's not being a cook myself. I thought it would be a good uh, idea to get Gordon's input. Come and, uh, just give us a couple of minutes of his time on our stand. Gordon's had lots of experience with disgusting food on his TV program. <laughs> it's got to be sick. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me um, pass on the request and um, give you a call back. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Alex. Cheers. Bye bye. While we're waiting for Gordon's answer, I've got the owner of one of Britain's That's best butchers to help me mix up some yeah. banger magic. Yeah, Sodium metabisulfite. You know, if, what, if, what does that do? Though? This isn't here to make you live longer, be no. happier, or anything else. It's there to make a heap of disgusting meat stick together in one piece. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> you in the alien. <laughs> <laughs> the MRM um, mechanically, recovers mechanically recovers me. me. Uh, in a chicken factory far, far away, they'll strip the breast meat off, the most valuable bit. The leg meat will disappear off somewhere else. You're left with this. Now, if you put this in, we couldn't bring along here today, that's got a huge hydraulic press in it. It will press this against a grill. The bones will stay this side of the grill. What comes out the other side will look like pink toothpaste. 
And that can be sold by the pallet load. It's all it's just the little bits of gristle and yeah. bits of pinky stuff that's dangling off. That's pretty close to MSM or MRM. Please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> oh, look at that fat. Look at how fatty that fat is. Yeah, we, we got real fat. Main reason. Oh, that is is something obscene about that. No, that's that's, 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 that's So this is the biggest single considering is water. Now, how much is that going to cost? Oh, I like sausages, and then we're going to eat them again. Now, rind. Yes. Is it just skin? It is. That, I mean, that is, I think so far, that's probably the most horrible. So this is going to be our 5% beef. It's the first piece of meat we've come to here. So far. 4% of the overall total is connective tissue, which is ligaments, gristle, tendons, bits of horrible stuff that connects muscle to muscle and muscle to bone. In order for connective tissue to even be edible, it has to go through some serious mincing. It's proving too much for our domestic machine. And see how those strands are still, still there. I mean, I think um, it's stronger than bone, isn't it? Right, if you have a skiing accident, you know, you're more likely to the, the tendon will rip a piece out of your bone before the tendon yeah. will break. Um, I thought, well, blend it, you know, leave it on for long enough, it'll turn into MRM, but it won't, these fibres won't break. Luckily, there's someone just over the other side of the hall who I can ask for advice. She's the number one fan. I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> I think he's really nice. <laughs> Gordon's doing a book signing, so maybe he'll sign my booker catalogue and I can ask him about my connective tissue issue. I can't get the, the connective tissue to, to sort of chop up, the beef connective tissue that goes into the bangers. Have you got any tips on, like, blending or something to get it to work? As I discussed my slippery banger problem with Gordon, I realised that connective tissue was beyond even his powers. He did sign me book a catalogue, though. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, mate. Book his catalogue. I'm not sure which bit says Alex, which bit says Gordon. He's not a big fan of connective tissue. He's not alone. Nobody's a fan of connective tissue. But if you're a fan of connective tissue, some of the places you can find it are Morrison's Pork, Garlic and Mushroom Pate or Tesco's Thick Pork and Beef Sausages. Meanwhile, back at the Banger factory, Gordon's been no help. We have since received six letters from his lawyers. They went about bangers, though. We just have to put up with some chewy bits. If you really love your kids, give them chemical powder. Yummy. Whee! Looks like strawberry mousse. All the waste mixed together and coloured red. Mmm. -hmm. This is the skins. And it's made out of what? Beef collagen. Collagen is again connective tissue and they pulverise it and treat it. I mean, not with any nasty chemicals and uh, can form it out into a kind of plastic. Here, oh, here it comes! Look at that, missus. Oh, how long are we having them? What's the ideal length? <laughs> That's it. Does anybody want to have a feel of that? Oh, very nice. <laughs> What's that? That's clever. They are a colour, aren't they? It's nice. They look nice. As luck would have it, Becca's visiting for the day, and she's very keen to be a banger dolly. Chop some bits up and get some cocktail sticks and sort of offer them to uh, the ladies and gentlemen who are here today. Gordon, beat that. The BBC wishes to make clear that this product is in no way endorsed by Gordon Ramsay. Sausage. 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 We're fully prepared for people to spit them out, but that's not what's happening. What do you think? You like that? Mm. It's all good. About an eight. It's quite mild. Shit, this sausage. Absolute shit. Disgusting. You like it? Of course, it's different when they know what's in them. Would you be surprised to find out that all these ingredients were in there as well? Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel really bad. I've ruined your day, haven't I? Yeah. Well, bye bye. Bangers with beef, inspired by McKechnie Jess. Lots of people have rated it 34, 29, 29, 30, uh, 32. 
32, 40, 36, 36. So I'm going to put them up on the board at about 34, 35. They've been a massive hit with the public here at the Good Food Show. OK, so McKechnie Jess makes some good stuff as well, but these bangers are a work of crap genius because people seem to genuinely like the taste. So what's to stop anybody getting a load of cheap by-products and making them taste nice? Because after all... Why should McKechnie Jess have all the glory? What I could do is make an even more disgusting product and then I could be crowned the greatest purveyor of disgusting food in Britain. I can't say I'm sorry to see the back of the good food show. I think I've outgrown it. I need to come up with my own food. I need to, I need to put together a series of horrible ingredients that I then turn into something that looks and, and tastes like a delicious food product, put it out on the market myself, and then I will be the victorious winner of the prize for the most disgusting food legally on sale in Britain. We can't come in, we can't get in. Ah, that's it. There we are. Now, I don't want to reinvent the wheel here, so I'm going to pick up where McKechnie Jess left off and use their banger ingredients as the basis for my superfood. What, what, what do you think about that? This is obviously this is a preliminary uh, recipe of disaster, in my opinion. So I'm having my recipe checked over by a Harley Street nutritionist to make sure it's bad enough. It's a question of really see what value the food is actually bringing to you. One of the foods will bring value to your body, whereas yeah. the other food will actually be detrimental to your body. So it's actually sucking out what nutrients you had in there already? That's correct. As far as nutrition, probably if you were to add in a scale from 1 to 10, yeah, so like yeah. that, and we go to there, there's been That's 20. 20. Yeah, I would rate that mm, a good 18 and a half. The sense of disgust. That, that, that'd still be a 10. Is there anything in there that you would not expect to find? I, I'd go for a 9. Is there anything in there that is particularly bad for you? I'm struggling to find something decent, really. Um, no, no, don't, don't, don't th try too hard. No, this is a 9 and a half. 47 out of 40. I think that's uh, Interesting. our best one to date. I've arranged to meet Simon here. He says we can trust their sausages. And he should know, he's a food technologist. I need his help. I've got this mass of, of slimy, unappetising rubbish, and I want to turn it into something that will not only look beautiful, mm. but taste delicious. Mm. What things going to do? Well, food technologists have been facing similar challenges to this for a very long time. If you think about it, you've got this this stuff, this, yeah. this slurry, but you need something to hold it in place. So that usually means you either make it into a sausage or you use it as the filling for a pie. Years ago, there was this guy called John Rudkin and he came up with this concept called sweet fat, which is basically refined flour, sugar, and a hydrogenated fat, all mixed up together, and he called that sweet fat. And the great thing about sweet fat is you can turn it into lots of other things. So that is the basis for cakes, pies, pastries, biscuits, cookies. It's very versatile. It's also incredibly okay. cheap. And hydrogenated fat is really bad for you? It is. We now know that it produces trans fats, and trans fats are something that human beings aren't meant to eat. Could I combine that with all the, the sort of connective tissue and uh, meat full of water and all yeah, that you, sort of Yeah, you've got, you've got a meat pie. Yes. Do, would, would you like some? Of course. Go on, help yourself. Dig in. If you fancy some hydrogenated fat made by pumping hydrogen through vegetable oil, I recommend, amongst others, KFC's Zinger Burger. Or you can buy some pastry from Booker and make some delicious pies like I'm going to. Increases risk of coronary heart disease, contains no nutritional value. Now, further from speaking to Simon, uh, I've moved the idea on a little bit. As well as doing a meat pie, I'm going to do a sweet pie, mainly because it rhymes. Uh, but also because I think it's quite a nice idea that you've got a savoury and a sweet pie in a single package. And what happens in the Process Research Centre? <laughs> yes, we'll carry out a lot of uh, food testing here and trial testing. So food companies can, can test out yeah. their new ideas for products? Exactly. Yes. Big, some of the big names? Are the big names? Yes, a lot of... Um, 
um, products that you know in the marketplace are born here. Yeah. Yes, and uh, a lot of uh, well-known brands as well. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, uh -huh. there's a new there's a new kid on the block. <laughs> The Process Research Centre is where I'm going to make my pies. It's like no kitchen I've ever seen. I love it. it must be quite exciting, though, for you guys to be pushing the technology to its limits. That's right. And really, you know, seeing what these machines can really do. Oh, yes, yeah. We, I mean, we never have dreamt of using it for something like this. But now, the sky's the limit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm getting a bit peckish. Port Ryan, bring it on. One, two, three. 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 Of course, at one time, to put the M's on the top of the pies, you would have some sort of machine which pressed out the, the tops, but we're doing it by hand so that we can actually charge more for the pies and make more profit. And when we scale this up to an industrial scale, we'll just ship in an army of underpaid Eastern European labour to, uh, to do the job for us. That's a W, not an M. You idiot. Do them all again. But this, this is a recipe f that we've come up with uh, for the fruit pie. What, uh, what, are you, what are your feelings about that? I mean, it has got 21% apple. OK. Um, this, is, this is quite impressively good for your purpose and is disastrous it? for mine. Yeah. If people would eat this day in and day out, mm. the impact that we would have from you know, some of these preventable degenerative mm. yeah. diseases, some of these could be absolutely huge and vast. Oh, oh, that's horrible. It's weird. It looks like some sort of uh, cell culture or something, some bacterial <laughs> thing that they've grown in a lab to infect people. Oh, jeez. That's what uh, human life came out of in the swamp, isn't it? Why is it so gooey? What is it in, in it that's making it so gloopy? And, and it's something called waxy maize, maize modified starch, and it's there as a, a thickener and a gelling agent. It allows you to add more water to the filling, having the, the waxy maize starch there. You know what it looks like? Wallpaper paste. Mm. Well, that's very similar to what it is. Yeah. Um, wallpaper paste is a starch and water solution, and so is what really? we've got here. So we could actually use this to stick things onto the walls? Absolutely. I can't tell you which product I based my exceedingly good pie filling on. I love it when a flan comes together. But their exceedingly good pastry was no use to me because they took hydrogenated fat out some months ago. So I had to use Booker's own brand. And this is all legal, isn't it? This is Everything we're doing we're, here is legal. This we is what are, happens every we day of the week in cafes up and down the country, etc. We are obeying... We're not going to get... No, we are obeying the food labelling regulations and the food production regulations here. Everything we're doing is according to the rules. <laughs> Temperature is 490. Okay, there's our meat pie. Now, does the M stand for meat? Does it stand for mischief? Or maybe it's W for waste products or water? Or is it E for E numbers or excrement? 200 disgusting pies. Done. To use some of the tricks of the trade that people might use to sort of deceive the consumer into thinking it is something more than it is, is to use instant heritage and actually create a sort of personality for it, like a Mrs. Smith's homemade cooked pies, you know, just as they've always been made. Hello, Dad. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Um, could you send me a, a photo of you, Dad? Coming from some yummy place like Yorkshire or somewhere, you know. They were uh, created in Reading. How many the chicken we've got from Thailand? 
Is there a problem with calling it British? As long as the factory is in Britain, then we can describe it as being British made. Carefully selected, what does that actually mean, carefully selected? There's one supermarket that carefully selects all the cheap rubbish to keep their prices low. I also like the fact that it doesn't have something it never had in the first place. It doesn't contain GM products. Well, nothing really does, you know. It doesn't contain that. You could say that. You could, you could say it hasn't got any dolphin in as well, if you want. The other way of implying natural is to have pictures of natural things on the product packaging. So you could show an orchard or lovely apples on the trees. If you use a very simple little bit of recycled cardboard, it, it again just yeah. gives connotations that it's natural and organic. So if you look at the sort of ethical market of, of organic foods and the rest, they have created a look and a feel. And that's actually, you can copy that. And that's the danger, is that once they create that look and feel, then less scrupulous uh, companies will actually copy it and trick people. Done. The food industry spends £40 billion a year in advertising worldwide, and Mr Riley's microwave pies want a piece of the action. So, from the quarterly figures, we see that... The more I see you... The more Kellogg's I made this brilliant you. advert for Special K Sustain. They said it kept you satisfied for longer than Special K. But what they've done is compare 40 grams of Sustain with 30 grams of the normal Special K. Extra protein and fibre. I mean, absolute genius. If they hadn't been caught by the Advertising Standards Authority. The ad was made by JWT, the world's fourth largest ad agency. I want these people working for me. Now, I imagine it would have been Kellogg's who gave JWT the info for the sustain claim. So I've been running over some of the claims I want to make. There's more apple in our apple, Bramley apple pie, than a, than a Bramley apple that big. <laughs> There's less sugar than a bag of sugar. <laughs> Guaranteed. I was hoping for a productive meeting to take Mr Riley's pies to the next level. But then it all went wrong. Uh, it was going all right. Uh, they seemed to like the pies. And then I started asking them about health claims and uh, what we could get away with, this, that, the other. And all, all of a sudden, the atmosphere changed, and they asked us to uh, turn the cameras off. They didn't want us to use the footage. And um, can we please leave? They don't want to be part of the programme. I'm not really sure why they threw me out. They ate enough pies. Got two packs left. But look at all these empties. They, uh, they couldn't get enough of it. But TV might not be the right medium for us anyway. Because our pies are so unhealthy, they're not allowed to be advertised during kids' TV. So I've been thinking outside the box. I'm onto another way to spread Mr. Riley's brand awareness. Oh, yeah, there's a McDonald's game on Neopets. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you have to do in the game? You have to run away from dinosaurs. And the dino and you need to get the um, chips and burgers. It's a great idea. What do kids love more than anything? Taste the reward. Video games and junk food. There's a fun new game each week. There's quite a lot of competition though. Well, I think we're going to have a problem with hydrogenated vegetable fat. I can't quite believe I'm on my way to see Asda to pitch my pies. I contacted all the supermarkets, but Asda were the only ones who agreed to see me. If they want to stock them, then the Crap King crown is mine. It will be interesting to see what ingredients we can get away with, uh, even with them, you know, obviously wanting to come across well on the telly and look like they're ethical and doing the best for the consumers. I mean, most of the things that we've got in these pies, you can buy in other products on Asda's shelves. So it will be interesting to see if we can uh, slip it in under their radar. Or they might just sort of say, get out, get out, stop trying to make a mockery of this whole food business. Who knows? Hang on, we're here. Quick. Anyway, uh, thank you. I've got my uh, pass now. I'm here to make goods and services more affordable. I'm not. Thanks. This is like the inner sanctum. It has a you know, multi million pound business. It's where it all gets control from. Ah, this is very nice. I like what you've done with the place. It's, uh, it's all right, isn't it? It's good, yeah. It feels very homey. And, uh, 
Yeah, not signed, this one. I'm afraid. Uh, I think you don't mind me uh, making free with your bookshelf. No, 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 just don't surely go the Ramsey ones out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> sure get the decent ones out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we've decided to do with our product is uh, produce a snack product that's aimed at people on the go, aged under 30, busy life. An idea that takes something that's familiar to everybody but has become a little bit boring, pies. He created a brand or yes, a, we yeah. created a brand that goes along with it. Everything was looking quite promising until Neil started reading our ingredients list. Quite a taste. Yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't normally taste it because of what's in it. Yeah. What, what do you mean? What, what, what you got? You got some grimy. You know, I work for Asda brand, and I wouldn't eat this because of our food policy. Yeah. Hydrogenated fats. Yeah, and yeah. All that kind of thing. But in and, terms of and like mechanically separated meat, yeah, and uh, beef connected tissue, so you're not you're not turning me on with your ingredients. Now all my ingredients are on sale in Asda in one product or another, so I brought along some stuff I bought there in case they started getting all holier than thou. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we, there's all sorts of you know products on the market like you know branded goods and things that have got, I mean, you know, that hot dog sausages and yeah, you're in there, but just, just remember where you are. You're in the, yeah. Asda, the Asda brand kitchen. You're creating Asda, Asda's own products, yeah, of course. Which is more than, more than half of what we sell. And the, yeah. re the reason it's more than half of what we sell is because people recognise other... Yeah. You know. yeah. you know, there's absolutely no reason why you should have any of these. Assuming this is the ingredient deck. Yeah. I mean... It's the sweet part. You want to take the piss or what? Now, I don't know much about supermarket buying, but it was sounding increasingly unlikely that Asda would be placing an order. All the things that he claims that he's making on the front, you need to make sure it's coming through in the back. It was made in Berkshire. With, without dolphins. I, you know, there's a lot of pressure on supermarkets, and there is a, a very savvy shop that comes into Asda. Mm -hmm. They're now reading every, all the labels. The media is focusing its attention on ingredients mm -hmm. and the goods and the bads. Go on, have a, have a test. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey? I'm a try. Come on, do it. All fresh. Uh, I've, I've learned in this game that I don't put anything in your mouth until I know what's in it. OK, they take nutrition and health seriously. But it's not all bad news at Asda for the crap connoisseur. You can still find a little connective tissue and hydrogenated fat if you look carefully. And even Mr Riley's pies have more fruit and less sugar than Asda's value apple pies. Always follow the Asda chef's advice. Never put anything in your mouth unless you know what's in it. OK, if I'm going to win this competition, if I'm going to beat the bangers, then I've got to forget about the supermarkets because once they see the ingredients lists, they aren't going to want to stock this product. They're cleaning up their acts. The people have spoken. They don't want this in their food. However, when it comes to catering, the rules are totally different. I mean, look at us here. We're in Subway. Eat fresh, they say. It might be fresh, but look at the bread. It's full of hydrogenated vegetable oil. The meat's only 71% meat. The rest of it's water and sugar and salt and stuff. Eat fresh, yeah? Get rid of the ingredients list. Nobody's any the wiser. Meaty and sweetie. Uh, hello, what's in it? Who knows? It's a lovely catering snack product. Where's Mum? Mum's gone to the shops. I've got them a surprise. Mum, she always gets it right. It's Mr Riley's pie! It's always a big surprise in Mr Riley's pies. Mr Riley's pies! Mr Riley's pies! You won't believe what we put in to Mr Everything's in place. Product, advertising, marketing strategy. I've just got to hit the road and get my creations out to meet their unsuspecting public. Make them legally available to as many people as possible. Would you like to try our pies? This is Mr Riley. It is Mr Riley. He's a nice man. He's a very nice man. I know him, I know him very well. And he's, a, he's a really fella. There you go. And you can all, like, you can all have a, a, a nibble. Yes, thank Thanks you. very much. Miss and you, sir. Riley's there you go. Pie. I'm thinking football stadiums, pop concerts, maybe a local takeaway. Hey, Mr. Riley's pie. And I haven't forgotten the school lunchbox market. Mm. <laughs> 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 I 
after a long and hard battle, Mr. Riley's pies came out victorious and were able to win the prestigious food award. The icing on the cake would still be to get my pies into a shop. Asda turned me down, but I know just the place now I'm going down the catering route. I've been working on a letter. Dear Booker, I feel I owe a debt of thanks to you for the role you've played in inspiring me to create my pies. Encased in Booker's own brand pastry, filled with a meaty-ish mixture based on the ingredients of McKechnie Jess bangers with beef, bought at one of your branches, it feels only right that I should offer you the chance to be the first UK stockists for Mr Riley's pies. I look forward to hearing from you. With best wishes, Alex Riley. P.S. As you might expect, they're very, very cheap. It's only taken a few days for a reply to come. They must be keen. I've got the letter from Booker here, so here goes. The Bangers with Beef product made by McKechnie Jess was delisted in the winter of 2007. It is widely available in the UK catering and retail trades and had previously been stocked in a few Booker branches due to customer requests. It accounted for 0.0003% of Booker sales. In the past year, we have removed hydrogenated fats from over 80 products and have reduced salt levels in over 100 own branded products. We continue to work with government suppliers and customers to raise food standards in the UK. Well, look, do you want to stock them or not? Just let me know. I tell you what, if they don't want to stock them, there'll be some very disappointed kids out there. Let me tell you. Can I have some more connective tissue, please, Mum? Yes, of course you can, darling. Way! Oh, uh, well, but I'm still going to win the competition. So I'm going to give someone else a consolation prize to show there's no hard feelings. Eat my pies. Come on, you know you want to. Have a pie! Mr. Riley's pies. Like the cake chess, only better. Hello. And we want to say a big thank you oh. to McKechnie Jess for inspiring us to create our own range of pies. Uh, is there anybody in, a managing director yeah. or directors, or anybody who'd like to come down and have a try at these? Yes, Mr. Riley's pies. Mr. Riley's pies. It's more than a whiff of the countryside in Mr. Riley's pies. Basically, we've come up from Royal Berkshire up to, to McKechnie Jess because we've been inspired by your bangers with beef recipe. We've yeah. created our own range of pies yeah. uh, inspired by that. Would you like to have a try? No, why not? This is the meat one. Is it? Meaty and sweetie. Basically, you get a meat one and a, and a sweet one yeah, in the same. Me on there here, no? no, no, no. This is it's perfectly good quality stuff. Basically, based around the bangers with beef recipe uh, that we've taken and sort of wrapped it in a, in a pastry case. Come on, guys, 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 guys! You've got to try this new pie snack. It's absolutely delicious. How did you get a hold of a recipe? Like... From the back of uh, from the back of your. Uh, Oh, Bangers with beef bag. We just kind of recreated it, got some technologists to put it together, and we just went a step further and put it into a pastry case. And what, what, yeah. what do you make of it? It's quite nice, right? Yeah. There's always a big surprise in Mr. Riley's pies. Can I eat it? No, it's disgusting. And we've got we've got a, we've got an award here that we want to give to to uh, McKechnie it. Jess. Uh, which is basically the Booker well, Prize. Like Gordon Ramsay, yeah? yeah, yeah, it's actually signed by Gordon. Uh, it's Booker Prize for the uh, for the worst food that we could find at Booker. Oh, yeah, uh, and uh, it was the bang of the beef. We just thought, you know, how can you make all those ingredients, put them together, and still make it taste and you know look yeah. like food, basically. So, fantastic. What do you re reckon? Do you want to try the apple pie? Yeah, that's good. No, no, I think that's good. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks You've won the much. prize. Okay. Thank Cheers. Then. Thanks a lot. McKechnie Jess say, we comply with all the meat regulations and the bangers with beef contain much more lean beef than we declare. I know, would you like to try Mr Riley? At last, Mr Riley's pies are legally available to the public and I claim my rightful place as the king of crab. Award for the crab is food. Done. But it turns out to be a cheese alternative victory, bulked out with defeat. What's wrong? We can't say that we've won this competition. We can't say that this is the most disgusting food available on sale in Britain because Weatherspoons have refused to give us their list of ingredients. And for all we know, they could be selling something lots more disgusting than our pies. They don't have to tell us what's in their food. 
We've asked them, they won't tell us. Who knows what they're selling? Why won't you tell me what's in your food? Come on. I thought I'd won the competition. Have you got any connective tissue? Or nitrogenated vegetable fat? Come on, show me your sausages. Oh, you could win this competition, it's not too late. Get them out now. If you've beaten me, fair enough, but just let me know. You could be serving the finest pub grub and then I'd still win the prize. Come on, with the spoons, let me know. I don't like secrets. I wonder what's in it. Just let us know what's in it. Have you won this competition or what? Hiya. Hiya. All right. Can you tell us what's in the food? What the ingredients are in, in Weatherspoon's food? Because we're doing okay. a comp We've got a competition here, and we're trying to find out what you know what's the most disgusting food legally on sale in Britain. And Weatherspoon's won't tell us what's in the food. They okay. won't give us their no ingredients. Weatherspoon's, whose food may be excellent and not crap at all, say we provide full nutritional values and dietary information on all our dishes on our website. In such a competitive industry, we do not want to publish full lists of ingredients, but will endeavour to provide this information on a request basis. Not to us, they didn't. But you might have more luck. Go to our website to find out who to ask, and there's loads of other crap on there too. Since the making of this film, hydrogenated fat has been removed from KFC's Zinger Burger, Subway Bread Rolls and Booker Pastry. And E124 has been removed by the manufacturers of Skittles Crazy Sours. But don't worry, you can still get E124 in a host of other products, including Iron Brew, Green Core Bart Simpson Cakes and Revels. You could have won a competition. Not interested. And it would you be, you know, you would be there. Any question. Now get that away. Can you please move over? Seems to shake. 